What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to use delegates. So first we're going to look at the presentation where you're going to learn the general idea of delegates. Then we're going to see an example that you probably have used before, but you weren't aware that it was a delegate. And then we're going to build our own delegates. So this is going to help you out to become a better C Sharp developer, a more advanced C Sharp developer, because delegates are quite a powerful tool and they're going to help you whenever it comes to working with events also. And if you like this video and you don't want to miss out on more, then hit that like button as well as on the subscribe button. So let's get started. All right, so what is a delegate? Well, in simple terms, a delegate is a type that can hold a reference to a method. And when you call the delegate, the method referenced will get called. Imagine we are developing a UI library that other developers can use to build mobile apps. And one of the UI elements that other developers can use is a button. If we look at the code behind the button class used to create the green button on the screen, a button like this will have the following properties. A string called text with the value sent, a color called back color, which is something greenish, and of course, two ints called size W and size H for the width and height of the button. Now, what is missing here is a method that contains the code that needs to be executed once the button is clicked. Now we have a problem here. We, as the developers who made this UI system, cannot tell what the other developers using our UI system want the button to do when it's clicked. That's why we need to provide the onClick event as a delegate and not as a normal method. And since a delegate is a variable that can store a reference to a method, as we heard earlier, other developers can write their own implementation inside a method that contains the logic they want to be executed on click and assign it to the buttons on click delegate slash event we provided. Our onClick delegate can be defined like this. So now let's break it down bit by bit. We will start by writing the access specifier, this private keyword, followed by the delegate keyword, which tells the compiler that we are defining a new type. And finally, we need to specify the type of methods our delegate can store. And by type, I mean the return type and the parameters. OnClick delegate is the name of the delegate we just defined. Now the next step is to actually create a variable of its new delegate type. So we define it just like we define any variable in C Sharp by starting with public, then the type of the variable we are creating, which is on, on click delegate, and lastly the variable name, which is on click. So again, we defined a public variable of type on click delegate and we named it on click. This variable can hold or store a reference to any method as long as it has void as the return type and takes no parameter. Otherwise, we'll get an error similar to when we try to store a float inside an int variable. So how can we use this new delegate? Well, let's say we dragged and dropped a button into our canvas in the IDE. We are using to develop this mobile app using our UI system which resulted in the creation of a button object. Let's assume the name of this button is send button. So let's first add the logic we want to execute when the button is clicked. In our case, we want to connect to the network, send the message, then display a message to the user. So now we have a normal method called send button click that is not yet connected to the button in any way. To fix that, we need to assign our method to the onClick variable of type onClick delegate. Note that we wrote our method name without the brackets. Because we're not calling it, we are just storing its reference in the onClick delegate. Now under the hood, if the mouse was hovering over the button and the mouse was clicked, our UI system will call the onClick delegate of our send button that in return will call any method that was assigned to it. In this case, it will call the send button click and the message sent dialog will be displayed. This way, whoever uses our UI system can create their own methods, then assign their methods to our delegate and we can call them whenever the conditions are right. 
we are not limited to on-click events. We can even create delegates for when the application starts or closes, for example. Well, this was a very abstract example, but this is a real use case of delegates in general. So next we will learn how to use one of the delegates that already exists in C Sharp. And after that, we will start creating our own delegates similar to how we did it in this. Similar example. to how. So see you in the next video. All right, so now that you know the general idea of delegates, let's look at them in action. And to understand them better, we will start by using a delegate that already exists in C Sharp. So first of all, let's start by defining a simple list of strings called names. And then I'm going to use this, let's say I want to remove names from it. So here there's this remove all method. And this remove all method allows me to remove all the elements that match the conditions defined by the specified predicate. So here you see this green predicate keyword here is basically what we can pass. So this is basically here a delegate that is expected. Predicate is just the name of the delegate that is expected. Once you click on it, you will find it here, public delegate pool predicate. So here we can see that the predicate is a delegate that takes an object of T, which means specific type. In this case, T is the type of our list elements. So in our case, it's a string and it returns a Boolean. So when we call the remove all method, this predicate will be called on every name in our list. If we read the documentation, we will learn that the bool that is returned by this predicate will determine whether or not this element will be removed from the list. If it returns true, then the element will be removed. And it is our job to write these rules that determine the fate of our names in our list. So of these names that we have here, which means Aiden, Sif, Walter and Anatoly. After all, the people who wrote the code behind the remove all method can't read our minds to determine the rules we want exactly. That's why we will create our own method that matches the definition of the predicate delegate and pass it to the remove all method. Let's say we want to remove all the names that contain the letter I. So we can write our filtration method like so. So we just create a static pool filter, which will take in a string. So this is our method called filter and we return whether the string contains the letter I. And here we're using the contains method, which will return a Boolean, which will return true or false. So here the contains, you see, it takes a string, checks if it contains that, and then it returns a Boolean. So what we do here is we in fact return a Boolean. And it takes a string as a parameter. So basically we will return true if the string contains I, and then the remove all method will execute this filter method on all the elements in our list. So let's now pass our filter method to the remove all method that we have up here that isn't finished yet and still needs a delegate that we can pass to it. And let's add it for each loop before and after the remove all method just for observation. So I'm going to add this little code in here where I just say this is what happened before. So we write a list of names onto the console with all the names that are in our list here. And then we remove all that follow a certain filter and we run it once again. Now this filter that we're passing, you see, we don't use the brackets here, even though it's a method. So basically we're passing a method as a parameter here and we're checking if the string that we're passing contains an I. So let's run it and see which names contain an I. So we have Aiden, Sif, Walter and Anatoly. And after that, we removed all except for Walter because Walter is a string that doesn't contain an I. Okay. And that's basically how we have used a delegate that was pre-existing. And now we have used a method that requires a delegate that we can pass to it. So basically what happened is that names, this list of strings here was given to remove all and checked one by one with the filter that we have used here. So it passed every single value from names one after the other into our filter method. 
ran through that filter and returned if it should delete it or not. So this Boolean will be true if I is contained in the string that was passed. So the string that we're currently looking at in our names list. And if this here returns true, then the filter method will return true, which will then lead to remove all taking care of removing the name from the names list. All right, so this was just one example of a delegate. And you see, we didn't pass specifically here what we want to have. So we didn't say which string we want to take, for example, by saying names, dots, and then index or whatever. We didn't have to do any of that because, well, remove all expects a delegate here. And that's what we pass to it. If this is still a little confusing, no worries. We're going to have a couple more examples, which will definitely help you to understand delegates a little better because we're going to create some ourselves and then it will make a lot more sense. So see you in the next video. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. Come back. In this lecture, we will create our own delegates to filter a list of people. And this will give us a deeper understanding of how delegates work under the hood. So let's consider the following class that we have here. So it's a very simple class, person with a name property as well as an age property, just two properties here. So we want to create our own delegates to filter people based on the age. Our filter delegates will take a person as a parameter and will return a bool if the condition regarding the age is met. What is the condition exactly? Well, we don't care since the code could be used to filter a list on a web page, for example, and the filtration feature might change rapidly. And well, that's exactly the beauty of delegates. What a luxury. All right, so let's define our delegate type. And therefore, I'm going to just go ahead and say that this is going to be a delegate of type Boolean. I'm going to call it filter delegate, and it will require a person. So a person object called P. Now let's go ahead and just create a little list of people of person objects, so to speak. Here we have four person objects, P1, P2, P3, and P4. And then we add all of them to a list. So they have different names as well as different ages here. So now we want to actually filter those people based on their age. For example, display the adults only, so age 18 and higher, or the minors only, so age below 18. Since we want to apply different filters, let's actually create a method called display people. This method will take the list of people and a filter as a delegate. And then it will filter the list of people based on that filter. So we also want to throw in a string called title to make things look more organized in the console. So first of all, let me set up the header of my method here. So we, here we have the display people method. It will require a string, the list of people, and the filter delegate that I will call filter. Now, what is it that I want to do in here? Well, first of all, I'm just going to write the title. And then I'm going to go through all the people that are inside of my person list here. And I'm going to check if the filter works with the person that we passed. So here, we're just going to say the person's name as well as how old they are. And now we can go ahead and just define a couple of methods that we will use as filters. Okay, so one will be for the minors. So here is minor. So we take in a person and we check their age against 18 and if it's lower then we know that we need to return true which means the person is a minor 
Otherwise, we will return false. Okay, so that's going to be the one filter. Then let's create another filter for adults, like so. And now another filter for seniors, let's say people above the age of 65, like so. Now in the main method, let's call the display people method a few times, the one that we just created, this one here. So let's go ahead into our main method. And here I'm going to display people. And here I'm just going to pass in the title. I'm just going to say kids, for example. I'm passing in the people list as well as my filter. So here my is minor filter. And I call it is minor, like so. And now let's check it out. Let's run this and see if it will display our kids. And it only displays Walter, who is 12 years old. Okay, so that filter worked. You see, we passed in a method. We didn't have to pass in any parameters to this method because we passed it in the position of a delegate. So here, this filter delegate. Let me scroll out a little so you can see it a little better. So here, we needed to pass in the filter delegate, which means we can pass in a method that just follows the filter de delegate's description, which means it just needs to pass in a Boolean and it needs to have one parameter of type person. And that's exactly what our methods slash filters, how I called them here, are doing. They return a Boolean and they require person P. So if is minor weren't following the structure, this wouldn't work. So if I were to get rid of this and return true here, for example, then this wouldn't work. You see here it says is minor. Well, cannot convert method group to program dot filter delegate. So it doesn't follow the instructions of our delegate. All right. So now let's do the same thing with our other type of filters. So first of all, with adults and then with seniors. So let's look at it and we see kids, Walter, adults, Aiden, Sif and Anatoly, and then seniors, only Sif and he's 69 years old. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And now you know how to use delegates, but there is more to know about delegates and especially about multicast delegates as well as events. And that is something that we're going to look at in the next video. So definitely don't miss that out and hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're at it, hit the like button and really helps us. So thanks a lot for watching the video again. See you in the next one.